Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Rustic, and today I want to give you some tips on filming fight scenes using knives. We're trained professionals, so take our advice at your own risk. We're showing you how to do action safely, but there's always the danger of getting hurt. So please be safe and use common sense. Also, hit subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. We never use real knives in fights because they're dangerous. You can actually cut someone, you can actually stab someone, that's pretty self-explanatory. But even a fake knife can still slice you if used improperly. Safety is paramount when you're filming any sort of fight scene, so make sure you have a medic or a first aid kit standing by, just in case. And when you do have your choreography figured out, make sure you walk it through many times very slowly to really get everybody comfortable. Don't go any closer than you need to. Keep your distance as big as possible to avoid any injuries. And also we have a saying in fight choreography which is, slow is smooth, smooth is fast, which means you can go a little bit slower and as long as it's smooth, it's gonna look fast and you're gonna be able to move through it. So you don't need to rush and make everything jerky, especially when using knives, move through everything slowly. Remember, slow is smooth and smooth is fast. Now, the real knife that you show in a close-up when you pull it out is called the hero prop. You have the bad guy pull it out, you show it in a close-up and then you're done with your hero prop. Normally the hero prop is a real knife or a very realistic knife, so you don't actually want to use that in a real fight. Once you come out of the insert shots, that's when you start showing movement and you can swap out your real knife for the prop knife. Even really big budget TV shows and movies that I've worked on, we will still use rubber props. And what sells a prop to the audience is three things. First of all, it's movement. When you're moving through, the prop doesn't even have to look like the original knife. It just has to be close enough to it with just the coloring. So for example, if this right here was silver, as long as it's moving through the frame, you see that flash, that's gonna sell it. The second thing is lighting. If you keep your set a little bit dimmer, that'll help you mask the difference between the fake and the real knife to the audience, and they won't be able to tell the difference. And the third thing is actually sound. Pay attention to any fight scene, and you will see that they use a lot of swipes. Like even when somebody pulls a knife out, same thing goes for whenever people are swiping. You can pull out a spoon and do a fight scene with a spoon, and as long as you add a bunch of slashing sound effects, it's still gonna look really cool. Okay, so let's talk about getting props. Now, my first recommendation would be to just to go to Amazon and type in rubber knife. I did this yesterday when I was looking around, and actually, you can get quite a lot of different things for less than $10. Now, this is kind of similar to that. This is right here is actually a cold steel knife. This is a company that makes props, training weapons, and real weapons. If I was to do a fight scene and I didn't have a prop ready to go, what I would do is I would just spray paint this part silver, and there you go, I have a knife. And now your third option would be, if you don't have the money to get anything like that, but you maybe have some old knives at home, this one's kind of the most dangerous because you can still hurt someone. You need to be very, very careful with this. But you can take an old knife that has a real edge and just really, really grind it on some concrete grind it down on a wall. You can't tell on camera that whether a knife is really sharp or not. So dulling it will help you be safe. I definitely recommend getting a rubber knife because I've done fight scenes with knives and you inevitably end up touching someone. So be very careful with that one. If you choose to go that way, keep your choreography very simple. Don't do anything too complicated and you'll be okay. So let's talk about some basics on how to actually choreograph a knife fight. So knife fights have the potential to be more technical than regular wild fight choreography. If your story calls for more than just somebody pulling out a knife and then just getting punched in the face and you actually want to have some martial arts style choreography in there, this is where it can get really interesting. There's a lot of opportunities to draw pretty lines with your limbs, with the movements. So when choreographing a knife fight, we usually look at martial arts forms and patterns and build on top of those. Some martial arts that lend themselves well for knife fights are Eskrima, Wing Chun, which has a lot of rapid movements and deflection as well as a good basic pattern, and arts like Krav Maga, which is an Israeli military art which also has a lot of brutal real-world applications. You can look up clips on YouTube for basic techniques from any of these martial arts for ideas, and you can learn how to safely apply them in your choreography. Also, play around with mixing different styles. You can see a really good example of this in John Wick, because they mix judo into their fights, and that makes it more visually interesting. I really enjoy when people mix their martial arts throughout a fight scene, or when people add a style of martial arts to a fight scene. As a filmmaker, as a performer, when you're choreographing something, you just have to always remember that your story is number one. So keep the choreography as simple as you can get it, but still matching the skill of the character. That gives you a lot more room to do really simple stuff really well, instead of like overextending and over choreographing and then struggling to keep up and having to fall flat. Action is supposed to be 
a helper and like a level up to your films. And if you make your choreography a little bit too complicated and you can't keep up with it, it's gonna actually bring the rest of your movie down. So make sure that whenever you're choreographing anything, you keep it very simple and you keep it to your actors and performance strengths and you just accentuate those. All right, so hopefully you learned something from this video. We talked about safety on the set, we talked about where to get props, we talked about how to use props, and we talked about some tips for choreographing a basic knife fight scene and where to look for your inspiration. But remember, all of these things that I'm telling you are just guidelines. There are no set rules in filmmaking. That's what makes it so interesting is when somebody comes up with something new that's really creative. So keep yourself flowing. Like Use these guidelines, make sure you keep your safety and your story as your number one priorities and just play. All right guys, thanks so much for checking out this video. Hopefully you learned something new. Let me know in the comments what you think. Let me know if you'd like to learn something else in the future. And if you haven't yet, hit the subscribe button. All right guys, hope you all have an amazing day. Good luck, get out there, stay safe, and I'll see you guys on the next video. Peace.